Probably you have heard this flamenco guajira falseta before. Did you know that it has almost one century and a half and probably is based on music from territories thousands of miles away from Spain? In episode 28 of the podcast Forgotten Sounds of Flamenco, I will talk about how flamenco guitarists invented how to play the guajira and what they may have based it on to create this marvel. Sounds that once were listened. Sounds that once were enjoyed. Sounds that once were danced. Sounds relegated to oblivion. And yet, there is still something we can do for them. Let us summon them. Let us summon them. Welcome to the podcast Forgotten Sounds of Flamenco. My name is Jose Miguel Hernandez Jaramillo, and I invite you to enroll in this journey through the sounds, stories, spaces, and people that were part of the 19th century flamenco. Hello, and thank you so much for listening to this episode, which I will dedicate to a topic that is not usually addressed in depth in flamenco. I am referring to how flamenco guitarists had to create new guitar accompaniments for new songs were incorporated into flamenco. Let's go to that time at the end of the 19th century when flamenco became a trendy music through Spain. New songs are being incorporated into flamenco, generally because some non-flamenco songs become very popular. And flamenco singers begin to sing these songs in their own way. The guitarist must accompany them with a guitar, and that creative process is what I will comment on in this episode. To make an analogy with current times, imagine that some contemporary popular music, for example reggaeton or corrido tumbao, begins to be sung in flamenco. How would the guitarist accompany these songs on the guitar? Well, as a guitarist, I would first adapt the rhythm patterns of those new songs to something similar of what I already know, trying to identify the strong and weak accents of the rhythmic sequence. Once the rhythmic part was determined, I would probably focus on the harmony part and what chords I had to use at each moment to accompany the singing. Finally, I would attend to the melodic part, what decorations I can make while playing and how I build falsetas for the instrumental sections at the beginning and when the singer is not singing. If you remember, as we saw in a previous episode, the guitarist and the musicians in general creates from the musical structures that she or he already knows, those resources that can be used or adapted. Well, I will tell you a specific case of flamenco guitar creation, which I analyzed in depth in my doctoral dissertation that is revealing of everything I have mentioned before. I am referring to this famous Guajira falseta. <laughs> Remember that in flamenco the term falseta is synonymous to variation. Well, in that dissertation I did a comparative musical analysis of the flamenco guajira with other American musical expressions such as the jarabe loco and the zapateado jarocho from Veracruz, Mexico and the punto or cuban zapateo from Cuba. I analyzed both the singing and the instrumental part, that is, the variations or falsetas that the instrumentalists make. For this, I use hundreds of scores and recordings from the 19th century. The falseta that I have played from Guajira was precisely the most used in the recordings and scores that I analyzed. That is, since early days of the presence of the Guajira in flamenco almost a century and a half ago, this sound has accompanied generations of artists and flamenco lovers. Well, what was my surprise to find that its formation, as well as the accompaniment of the guajira on the guitar, was not accidental, but that there were already some musical elements before the flamenco guajira itself that were used in the guajira until today. I also found that the most frequent variation of the Cuban zapateo is the following. <laughs> This variation is very similar to the Guajira's falseta we're analyzing. Perhaps orally we do not perceive this similarity so clearly because the harmonic structure of the Guajira and that of the Cuban zapateo are analogous but inverted. And what does it mean? The variation of the Cuban zapateo consists of two measures, the first with harmony on what is called the tonic or the main chord, and the second on the dominant tonality. 
However, as I mentioned, this structure is inverted in the Guajira. The first measure goes on the dominant and the second on the tonic. I play both again so you can notice the difference. If we exchange the measures of the most common variation in Cuban Zapateo and we play the second as the first one and vice versa, this variation would sound in and as you can hear this is practically the same as the most common falseta in the flamenco guajira. I will play it again. If you are watching this episode on the YouTube channel Sonidos Olvidados Etnomusicología Creativa, you can see the similarity graphically. There is a change because it's done in the Guajira the following instead of This slight transformation can be explained by analyzing how the Zapateo variation would technically have to be played on the guitar. With the Guajira falseta, we avoid pressing a fret on the fingers of the left hand by plugging the open string. But this is not all. Years ago, I was talking Requinto Jarocho lessons with Claudio Vega in Mexico City when he played the following while teaching us the Jarabe Loco. <laughs> Imagine my surprise when I heard it because it is practically the same that what we do in the flamenco guajira. Therefore, such a remarkable similarity is hardly the result of chance. I also found another element that reinforced the hypothesis that the guajira guitar playing did not emerge from nowhere. It was not created from scratch. In the second episode of the podcast, just one year ago, I commented that the Jarabe has had arrived in Spain from Mexico around the 1830s and has been considered a flamenco dance in the 19th century. If you have not heard this episode, I invite you to listen to it. And by the way, it was one of the most listened to episodes of this podcast. Analyzing the musical samples that we have of those Spanish jarabes, they contain musical structures very similar to Mexican jarabes. Therefore, the Spanish guitarists of that time already had to play the jarabe on the guitar. If you remember what I told you before, the Guajira's falseta have an inverted structure concerning the variations of falsetas of the Cuban Zapateo. But the harmonic structure of the Guajira falsetas coincides with that of the Jarabe variations. Could this be a coincidence? Well, probably not. When the flamenco guitarists have to start accompanying the Guajira on the guitar, they probably already know how to play the Jarabe. Perhaps they have to make minor adaptations. For example, in the tempo or the speed with which the Guajira is played, probably a little slower than the Jarabe. Still, indeed, they could reuse Jarabe techniques, strums and falsetas. At this point, perhaps it could have been possible that the Guajira's falsetas I played before to have already been played in the Jarabe. This is just a hypothesis that needs to be explored further in the future. Well, we have seen how things do not occur by chance and how music from different countries and periods was and continues to be connected, even if we don't know it. This is the beauty of researching popular repertoires of the past, especially when they are shared by different countries and continents. So when you listen to this falsetta again, remember all the historical baggage that all the people from other generations, from other countries, have played it and continue to play, and it will probably continue to play it for a long time. Well, to finish, if you like this episode, please share it with your social media and subscribe if you have not done so yet. It is free and you have many options, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Evox, or the YouTube channel Sonidos Olvidados Etnomusicología Creativa. Have a great time and see you here in two weeks with new stories about the beautiful 19th century flamenco that's still so unknown. Thank you.